my, my seminar will, uh, will uh, show you what uh, we are doing in our, uh, in our lab and uh, specifically what we are studying now <coughs> about uh, the basic mechanisms of uh, synaptic uh, uh, exocytosis, uh, which are maintained uh, in, uh, in all animals, uh, also from the uh, evolutionary point of view. So, uh, it is uh, uh, interesting to study this uh, uh, mechanism in uh, very simple animals uh, in which you can combine both genetics, uh, uh, strong genetics, and uh, uh, strong uh, uh, um, physiological uh, uh, techniques. Another interesting thing is that uh, uh, these uh, basic, uh, it, it is not a, a new story, but uh, it seems that it is a new story. Uh, um, many uh, psychiatric diseases uh, are not uh, uh, connected with uh, clear uh, um, uh, neurodegeneration or alteration in neurons. Uh, for instance, uh, uh, schizophrenia. And uh, uh, this was observed since the beginning. So, uh, for instance, uh, uh, Wernicke, who was one of the first uh, uh, um, neurologists studying uh, schizophrenia, was also uh, talking about uh, uh, this disease as a disconnection disease. So he was thinking that there was something wrong in the transmission of the information from one neuron to the other. So um, the uh, studying uh, basic mechanism of neuroexocytosis as well as studying uh, uh, more specific uh, uh, synaptic mechanism can be also uh, useful, can be, could be useful uh, to understand uh, or to have uh, some uh, ideas about uh, uh, the uh, physiopathological mechanism of some kind uh, of a psychiatric disease. And uh, uh, so uh, um, if we want to give uh, uh, also another uh, uh, contribution <laughs> to our uh, idea to study um, uh, something in Drosophila, this could be also a contribution. Maybe the only one who are very proud about this are me and uh, Fabienne and no other people. But anyway, that's <laughs> uh, one important thing uh, we must think about is that uh, the basic mechanism regulating uh, uh, exocytosis uh, and also uh, obviously neuroexocytosis are similar, but we must also think that there are uh, different uh, aspects uh, which must, must be uh, considered. For instance, when we talk about uh, uh, neuroexocytosis, we need to talk about uh, a very fast system. Uh, neuroexocytosis is a process uh, taking uh, uh, about uh, two or three hundred microseconds, so it's a very fast process with respect to other kind of exocytosis, like the release of uh, the adrenaline hormone from the uh, um, adrenal gland, which is a milliseconds or 10 of millisecond process, or if we think about the real exocytosis, uh, the secretion, for instance, is a seconds process. So, there are differences in the velocity of the process, and these differences in velocity are not necessarily connected with the differ different uh, proteins, but can be connected also with the, the uh, different uh, assembling on the different uh, uh, um, uh, playing of the uh, basic uh, protein involved in the process. <coughs> uh, the basic mechanism of, ah, oh, sorry. The basic mechanism of uh, neuroexocytosis are also maintained uh, along evolution. So, as I told you, we can study them in very simple systems, uh, giving us the possibility to uh, do genetic, electrophysiological, morphological approaches, and also behavioral approaches, which is a very important thing if we think about uh, uh, psychiatric disease. I am not telling you that uh, we have uh, or we 
there is also a model of uh, schizophrenia in drosophila. The problem with this model is that you cannot ask a drosophila if they, uh, if they see some uh, hallucination or some uh, uh, person uh, in the corner uh, and so on. So uh, we, yes. <laughs> So, which is the real problem is that we must think about that they are different uh, models. Uh, we cannot translate uh, all uh, human things uh, in our models. We can uh, use behavior like, or behavioral tools like a way to test uh, the function of uh, uh, complicated networks in, uh, in a brain. Uh, simpler brain, but also a complicated brain, and see if uh, these, the changes we introduced inside these brains gave some kind of dysregulation. So, <clears throat> uh, just briefly, uh, I wanted to stress what I told you just a few seconds ago. Uh, ago. Uh, these numbers uh, refer to, to uh, humankind. We have, uh, about, we have uh, it was, obviously these are uh, data which can change uh, uh, for something, but usually we, 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 we tell that there are uh, um, 10 uh, power 12 neurons in our um, uh, brain system, 10 power uh, 15 synapses, and uh, this uh, signifies that uh, on average, uh, each neuron is, is connected with uh, uh, about 1,000 uh, uh, synapses on average. So this uh, signifies that at least, or more or less, he is, uh, neurons is, is receiving uh, uh, information from uh, about uh, uh, 1,000 different uh, uh, neurons or less, but around this kind of uh, uh, number. And uh, so there is a huge integration of these informations. So think about what happens to this kind of integration if one or more or all synapses are not working well. So the ability to, inf to implement information by the receiving neuron is completely changed. And also it's changed the output of this neuron. So practically the, uh, the chain of neurons in which this one is inserted is not working like a normal one. Can work in differently, it can manage differently informations. A neuron generates a neural code, which is an action potential. Everyone knows this, I don't need to show you exactly <laughs> how it's working. So it's uh, an all or, na or none uh, response. And so practically uh, the um, information ability of a neuron is, uh, or the information processing, processing of a neuron is a code, is a code made by action potential or no action potentials. So this is the information traveling along uh, neural networks. And this information is uh, uh, generated by one neuron and transmitted to another neuron. And the other neuron is receiving this information and also the same kind of different types of the same kind of information from other 1,000 neurons. So it is not important, uh, it is not only important to destroy, uh, that a neuron is destroyed to kill the ability for, to elaborate information inside a, a circuit, but it is also possible to change this ability to uh, elaborate information inside a, a network just uh, with a change, as I told you, of synaptic uh, function. Here I have uh, a brief uh, uh, video showing uh, how is the, this kind. This is a, a thalamo, uh, thalamic neuron working during the sleep. And this is the same thalamic neuron working during uh, awake state. So it is generating the same kind of signal, 
an action potential, but the number, the, the type of code is a completely, the, the coding is completely different. This is a rhythmic activity and the other one is a completely arrhythmic activity. And maybe this, uh, this is another example, a closer to uh, uh, what we are talking about. Uh, you see here, this is a neuron inside a, a brain, uh, which is responding uh, to uh, this uh, uh, substance. These are various uh, uh, stimulation, each one, uh, in each uh, stimulation, uh, uh, the bar is, uh, shows, uh, bar shows uh, um, action potential. And uh, this is the same neuron responding to another substance. Again, each uh, uh, row is uh, uh, the response, uh, single response, uh, the response to a single stimulus. So the same neuron is uh, coding uh, differently to different uh, uh, stimuli. And uh, maybe you are uh, uh, interesting to know that this is not a human neuron. And this is an insect neuron, is a honeybee neuron. Uh, located in the part of the, of the brain uh, um, uh, elaborating uh, um, the olfactory informations. So each of these neurons is a part of a simple complex, complex circuit processing bits of information. For instance, this is a circuit well known by Fabien, maybe is, uh, is uh, the um, uh, visual pathways in Drosophila. And uh, these, uh, uh, this, these neurons are cor uh, correlated uh, uh, with the elaboration of uh, uh, um, visual field movement. So they coordinate the flight uh, when Drosophila is flying. So it's flying uh, uh, forward or backward uh, uh, as in response to the movement of the visual field. So, <coughs> What about when we have uh, uh, a pathology? <clears throat> uh, all neuron flu function rely on the ability of neuron to generate one or more action potential. This is a clear situation. This, uh, and uh, this is uh, what everyone is thinking about uh, 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 nervous system disease. So when you have uh, the death of the neuron in degenerative disease or in an infarct, you have uh, the loss of this ability, and obviously you have uh, a loss of the uh, ability to process the information. So for instance, corticospinal uh, pathway uh, uh, lesion, the corticospinal pathway signifies uh, an, uh, an inability to move, uh, uh, to move uh, a leg or to move uh, uh, the hand and so on. But there is also another possibility that uh, the conduction of the action potential along uh, axons uh, is uh, uh, altered. So for instance, this is the case of multiple sclerosis. In multiple sclerosis, you do not have any kind of a neurodegeneration, but you have the degeneration of the myelin sheaths. But this gives uh, an impairment in the function. Not only, in uh, multiple sclerosis, you have also a classical scene, which is the euphoric delirium. So there is something uh, which is connected with uh, 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 higher psychiatric functions. And uh, at the end, we have uh, this uh, last possibility that these, bits of, be, that these bits of information uh, can be uh, transferred from one neuron to the other one. <clears throat> this is relying, in, uh, relying on synaptic function. And obviously, you uh, alter uh, the ability for integrating uh, signals by the, uh, the uh, postsynaptic neuron. <laughs> this is the case of schizophrenia some types of depressions may be autism. <clears throat> so as I told you, in uh, schizophrenia, for instance, we have this kind of disconnections. 
we do not have any kind of neural death or neurodegeneration. The data are still not clear because uh, the cases of neurodegeneration observed in schizophrenia patients after death, when they, uh, their brain were examined, uh, are probably due to the years of years of chronic treatment with uh, drugs. So there is this kind of uh, um, uh, this, uh, uh, artifact, for instance. <clears throat> Okay, so let's go to uh, focus uh, uh, on what we are doing uh, on synapses. Uh, in our lab, in collaboration with uh, the lab, uh, well, at this moment we are uh, an, an, a single lab. We are coll collaborating at the beginning, but now we are a single lab <coughs> with uh, Professor Montecucco. We uh, we're focused on uh, analyzing the basic mechani mechanism of uh, neuroexocytosis, the so-called neuroexocytosis nanomachine. Everyone is talking about nanomachine, nano, or nano, I don't know what, and so nanomachine is perfect. <laughs> uh, synapse, uh, uh, synaptic physiology is uh, substantially um, uh, reviewed in this, uh, in this uh, uh, panel. As you can see, we have a lot of uh, vesicle filled with uh, the neurotransmitter, <coughs> with neurotransmitter, sorry. And uh, uh, vesicles are uh, um, in a, a kind of vesicle pool, which uh, uh, is ready for release uh, these, uh, uh, for uh, um, release a neurotransmitter after the fusion, docking, priming, and fusion of uh, uh, neurotransmitter vesicles uh, with uh, uh, the presynaptic membrane. Uh, the process uh, is a, a multiple step process. Uh, it was uh, observed the uh, um, first process which is the docking effect, and then we have the priming effect. Uh, which is uh, uh, related uh, with uh, the interaction uh, uh, with the specific proteins uh, in the pre and post uh, in the vesicle and pre uh, synaptic membrane. Then we have the fusion between uh, uh, both uh, uh, lipid membranes, uh, which is also a very interesting process because from the um, biophysical point of view uh, signifies uh, um, uh, a distortion uh, in lipids, uh, uh, which uh, is uh, uh, under investigation by uh, pure biophysicists. Um, and then we have the full fusion. Sometimes we have uh, also uh, a, a partial fusion with the uh, reconstitution, uh, rapid reconstitution of the vesicle. Um, uh, which is called kiss and run, and uh, this uh, uh, effect was uh, uh, studied and was, uh, su uh, was supposed by, <coughs> if I remember, by the Camilli because uh, of the fact that in uh, central nervous system uh, synapses the number of vesicles uh, is uh, uh, lower than uh, uh, the uh, number uh, which is uh, completely lost uh, uh, after uh, strong uh, activity in the neuron. So it was not uh, clear how vesicle can be maintained in number if they fuse so, with so fast, uh, uh, with so quick velocities, sorry. So let's talk about sex in synapses. Uh, uh, which is uh, this part, as uh, I told you. Uh, the uh, vesicle is uh, docking. Here we, we see exactly what is happening at the level of uh, the, the membranes. Uh, we have uh, this uh, effect with uh, um, uh, a curvature of the, of the membrane, uh, uh, lipid membrane, in one uh, uh, direction. And then we have uh, uh, the formation of hemifusion uh, uh, intermediate, which is this one. And then uh, we have the formation of the fusion pore with another kind of uh, curvature. This 
these uh, passages are uh, part of a strong study from the point of view, uh, energetic point of view and the biophysical point of view. When uh, uh, we have uh, the formation of the narrow fusion point or the uh, intermediate uh, with the exit uh, of a neurotransmitter, then uh, we have the choice to go in this uh, direction with the full fusion, kiss and fusion process, or we can go back uh, um, at, uh, through the detachment of vesicle again and the reformation of uh, 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 empty vesicle, which can be refilled so uh, very quickly. If we go to uh, analyze which are the players of the neuroexocytosis nanomachine, here we see uh, which are the most important ones uh, also here. <clears throat> Substantially, maybe also this one, uh, this one is uh, also uh, an old uh, um, uh, panel. Uh, in the, uh, there are many other uh, uh, protein involved in the uh, nanomachine, but the most important ones are here. Uh, which are the proteins of the SNARE complex. The SNARE complex is made by uh, these uh, proteins, SNAP25, uh, syntaxin, and uh, the, uh, which are uh, located in the presynaptic membrane, and uh, synaptobrevin, which is located in the, in the vesicle membrane. The assembly of uh, these uh, three proteins uh, in uh, a complex, which is called the SNARE complex, uh, uh, permits the, um, uh, make the, the, makes the vesicle closer to the presynaptic membrane and drive the fusion uh, of the two membranes. So it is very important to, to uh, the formation of the complex because it gives the uh, um, energetic uh, um, support for the formation of, uh, um, for the fusion between the two membranes. There are also other important proteins. For instance, this uh, orange one is a synaptotagmin, which is a calcium sensor. So synaptotagmin uh, interacts with uh, the snare complex and uh, gives another uh, support uh, for the uh, fusion between the two uh, membranes. Another one is a complexing, which is uh, called the, uh, the break. Uh, uh, two or three years ago was called, uh, they were calling it the break of the system in the sense that uh, with the complexing, it seems that everything is blocked in uh, uh, the right position, waiting for the entrance of calcium. Uh, recently, someone uh, instead uh, using uh, mice knockout uh, of complexing found the, uh, the different, uh, uh, a different thing, but in any case, it is important. So complexing and uh, uh, synaptotagmin uh, seem to play a regulatory role. Another important role is played by MUNC18. And MUNC18 is uh, uh, connected, uh, it is not written, uh, written here, but is connected with another complex uh, with other uh, MAGUC uh, proteins, CASC, uh, VELIS, and MINT. So uh, it seems also uh, that this uh, uh, is also a regulatory a protein or a regulatory system. So if we uh, uh, focus on the snare complex, um, uh, we um, uh, arrive to the we arrive to the conclusion or to the uh, statement that they are uh, extremely important and necessary for uh, uh, vesicle uh, or neurotransmitter exocytosis because. <coughs> of uh, uh, the strong effect on these proteins by uh, the uh, two kinds of toxin, toxins, uh, botulin toxin and the tetanus toxin. Here you see how is uh, the uh, zippering uh, through the coil-coil domain the, uh, of uh, the three proteins. We have this uh, 
kind of zippering uh, going uh, towards uh, the uh, C terminus of the, <coughs> of the proteins, making uh, the uh, snare complex. Okay. In this, uh, uh, in this um, uh, panel, you, in this slide, you see uh, all the um, uh, sites where uh, BONT, which is the botulinum toxin, and uh, TENT, which is the tetanus toxin, are acting on these three proteins. So in each point, uh, in each site, the, uh, the fraction of the botulinum toxin is uh, cleaving uh, the protein. So, what is the effect of these proteins? What is the effect of botulin toxin and tetanus toxin? The effect is a strong paralysis. It is a complete block at the level of the uh, peripheral synapse, like the neuromuscular junction. It is a complete block of neurotransmission. So this signifies that these toxin, toxins are acting directly in the uh, most sensitive point of neuroexocytosis nanomachine. If you destroy that point, the SNR complex, you do not have any kind of neuroexocytosis. Paralysis is a death paralysis in the sense that you have a block of the respiratory muscles, so you are not able to breathe. And the effect is very strong effect, you see about 80 nanogram, nanograms of uh, uh, botulin toxin are sufficient to kill one person, okay? So I don't know why nature <laughs> arrived to this uh, particular uh, uh, effect, but uh, I think that probably uh, uh, I am not an expert, but uh, talking with uh, Cesare Montecucco, who discovered the, uh, the, 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 the site of action of the, of the toxin, uh, uh, it is uh, the most poison uh, or the poisonous uh, toxin in the world. You have death, or maybe you can use it also for, uh, uh, <laughs> it is used for, <laughs> for aesthetic uh, treatments. Also from, uh, I must say, also from uh, uh, clinical treatments for the uh, spasmodic uh, um, contraction of the sternocleus mystideo. And uh, the effect lasts for about five, six months after uh, subcutaneous uh, or intramuscular injection. Okay, so uh, Montecucco uh, analyzed the effect of uh, all uh, uh, fraction of water in toxin and uh, observed a strange effect of two uh, of these fraction, bond E and bond A. Both uh, cleaves, cleaves, sorry, both cleave uh, um, SNAP25 at the C terminus uh, level, but one uh, cleaves just only nine residues and the other 26 residues. The effect is the same. So the paralytic effect of both toxins is the same, even if uh, they the both fraction cleaves a different uh, uh, lengths of the C terminus, uh, uh, SNAP25 C terminus. So why there is uh, the same effect with uh, a different uh, site of cleavage? Not only uh, bond A cleaves the just only nine residues, but also it doesn't interfere with the deformation of the snare complex, while all the other 
bond, uh, botulin toxins like bond E and also the other ones, has an effect in the assembly of the complex. The uh, very specific effect of the botulin toxin is ascribed, obviously, to the fact that they disrupt the formation of the snare complex. But bond A doesn't do this, but blocks completely uh, neurotransmitter release. So you have a paralysis without the disruption of the snare complex. What happens with this, uh, with this uh, uh, toxin? The idea of uh, uh, Montecucco and Pantano, Sergio Pantano is uh, uh, a physicist working in the Institute, uh, uh, Institute Pasteur de Montevideo. And uh, uh, he is uh, uh, a physical uh, and, and a chemical physicist, so he is uh, working on models. So he tried to translate this data in a model. And the idea was that uh, the snare complex is not only one between, uh, uh, between one vesicle and the membrane, but you, you need to think the, 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 the assembly, the assembly, you think the situation in a 3D, uh, situa in 3D condition. So you have a, a kind of, of, uh, of, we can go here. Okay, you have here a sphere, and around the point of uh, uh, contact between the sphere and the presynaptic member, there is a number, a rosette of snare complexes, which are placed around the point of a contact and are geared one to the other one, forming a super complex. Okay, this is the model, okay? Uh, <coughs> the tremendous effect of bond A is due to the disruption, not, not of the single snare complex, but of the rosette. So if you, if you do not have the rosette, you do not have the possibility to, for fusion. This is the idea, eh? Um, Sorry. Okay, no problem. So the, uh, the number of, uh, uh, of uh, um, uh, single snare complexes uh, uh, placed around the point of contact uh, uh, between the two membranes and forming the super complex was supposed to be uh, 10 according uh, about uh, according to the calculations uh, between the effect uh, physiological and the number of uh, uh, the number of um, the amount of uh, um, protein present in the in the synapse but it, someone is t talking about 10 someone is less than 10 uh, between the, uh, usually between 10 and uh, uh, between 5 uh, 5 and 10 but this is a, a model problem. What uh, we wanted to, uh, to, to test was uh, instead uh, if the model uh, can uh, work in vivo, <laughs> obviously, in, in, uh, in, uh, in, in from the physiological point of view. So this uh, is the model. You can see each of these uh, uh, complex uh, 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 is a snare complex. A snare complex, snare complex, snare complex, snare complex, snare complex, snare complex, snare complex. And they are geared gear together, this with this, this with this, and so on, uh, through an ionic uh, coupling <coughs> between uh, two residues. One is uh, the residues uh, 198, which is an aspartic acid in uh, the SNAP25 of one snare complex. And the other is uh, the residue 250, which is uh, an arginine uh, comp uh, residue in uh, the syntaxing of the adjacent snare complex. 
So they are geared together. This is geared together, this, 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 and this, 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 this. And so you have the rosette. As I told you, is uh, an ionic <coughs> coupling. So the idea is, uh, what happens if we uh, disrupt the ionic coupling? We do not have any possibility to form this uh, gearing between one and the other adjacent uh, snare complex. And so if you disrupt the snare complex, maybe you can see the block of neuromuscular, uh, of, uh, sorry, neuroexocytosis. This is the idea, okay? How can we test this idea? We tried to test this in Drosophila, okay? So we have also in Drosophila the same synaptic uh, machinery, nano machine. We were able to find the both residues in Drosophila. They are 206 in SNAP25 and 253 in syntaxy. They are both obviously an aspartic and an arginine. We are able to manipulate, genetically manipulate Drosophila, especially uh, as, I, as I show you after. We are able to analyze from the morphological point of view, electrophysiological point of view, the uh, synapse. <coughs> and uh, we can also, uh, and this is uh, obvious, a, further, uh, a further test, we can also uh, try to see what is happening from the, uh, at the level of higher circuits. But th this is not, uh, this was not our idea since the beginning, it was the other one, obviously. So we generated the transgenic lines. Why transgenic lines? Allora, first of all, uh, because uh, um, there is uh, um, another SNAP uh, uh, gene in Drosophila, which is called SNAP24. Uh, usually it's not expressed, but when you do not have SNAP25, you have uh, the expression of SNAP24, and uh, uh, this uh, um, uh, substitute uh, SNAP25 in null mutants. So, we cannot use a new uh, uh, mutants or a mutation of the native gene. Secondly, the idea is, uh, is that uh, um, we need just only to uh, disrupt the, uh, the assembly of the complex. So uh, basically, if we introduce uh, one uh, snare com one altered snare complex in this position, for, is for instance, you do not have the formation of the rosette. So you can express uh, altered snare complexes in a wild type background. This is the idea why we used the transgenic, uh, uh, transgenic lines. And we generated many transgenic lines. One with the substitution of uh, 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 arginine with, uh, uh, with alanine, which is a non-charged, not charged residue. Which, this is, was the first one. Then we generated, uh, uh, um, the we introduced a, a transgene of SNAP25 in which we substitute uh, uh, one uh, uh, charged residue with uh, uh, the uh, residue charge uh, with the opposite uh, uh, charged. The same uh, is uh, for syntaxing. And also we, uh, but this was like, uh, um, like uh, uh, a, um, uh, control, we uh, introduced also the SNAP25 deletion uh, in, uh, transgene in which uh, uh, SNAP25 was uh, deprived of the famous nine uh, amino acid residues. The expression of these transgenes was made, uh, was, uh, uh, made possible using the uh, Galford-Lime uh, binary US uh, uh, b binary system. <coughs> Uh, in other words, crossing, crossing uh, the uh, transgenic line with a uh, specific GAL4 line, which is LAV GAL4. LAV GAL4 is a line in which uh, we have a, a pan-neuronal driver. 
uh, uh, crossing uh, uh, these uh, lines, we have the expression of the transient just only in the nervous system, uh, uh, nervous system uh, cells. And uh, we made this uh, kind of crossings in uh, all our, uh, uh, for all our transient lines. And then we made the uh, electrophysiological analysis. <coughs> electrophysiological analysis was made in the third instar larva, uh, which usually is pinned down in, uh, in uh, Silgard, uh, Petri, uh, Silgard uh, prepared Petri dish. Uh, the larva is cut along the longitudinal uh, axis, and then uh, everything is, is flat down using pins. And then all the, uh, all the internal organs are removed except the uh, peripheral uh, wall uh, made by muscle. This preparation, is in fact, is called uh, body wall preparation. <coughs> Uh, with this preparation, we have uh, free access to uh, uh, the muscle fibers of the drosophila uh, of the larva, usually fiber 6 and fiber 7. This uh, pattern uh, of fibers is repeated for each segment. We, uh, usually we work in uh, this segment or in this one or in this one. And uh, uh, each segment is uh, uh, innervated by a uh, 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 segmental nerve uh, arising from the nervous system. This is the, uh, uh, is the larval nervous system. These, <coughs> these are the optic lobes, and this is the, the ventral, ventral part of the nervous system. Uh, usually, the nervous system is cut away, and uh, we suck in uh, uh, stimulating pipette the uh, segmental nerve. Uh, uh, in this way, you can stimulate, uh, and uh, using a microelectrode, intracellular microelectrode, you can record the postsynaptic potential. These uh, fibers doesn't, uh, the don't have, <coughs> uh, have no, uh, they, 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 they do not uh, um, uh, generate any kind of action potential. They have just only a postsynaptic uh, uh, potential, and uh, they are virtually iso uh, potential fibers. So you can record uh, from the, uh, the end of the fiber or from the middle, and uh, is the same. This, this is a biophysical property. Maybe you are the only one to understand this. <laughs> well, no, no, it's, it's, it's easy enough. And I'm joking, obviously. Uh, what do you see? You can see two types of response. One is a response uh, following the stimulus of the nerve, this one. This is a postsynaptic potential. It's called, uh, as you know, evoked release or evoked potential, evoked by the stimulus. But uh, if you don't stimulate uh, anything, uh, you have uh, these kind of very small potentials appearing uh, randomly in the, in the trace. These uh, are called the miniature end plate potential, or minis, or maps, or whatever you want. They are spontaneous. And uh, there is a still debate. They were discovered in 1953 by Fete Katz, but it still is debating about what are uh, <laughs> the real significance of minis. Uh, someone is uh, telling that uh, they are noise, the noise of a synapse. Someone is uh, uh, talking about uh, uh, trophic effect on the postsynaptic neuron or postsynaptic cell. In any case, uh, these uh, potentials are due to the random fusion of one or two or three vesicles uh, randomly. Uh, 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 at the level of presynaptic membrane. So it is very important to study them because the smaller one is due to the uh, single fusion event. So you have the, the possibility to measure the uh, amplitude or, to, or the effect of a single vesicle fusion with the presynaptic membrane, OK? So what happens uh, in, our, uh, in our mutants? <clears throat> the spontaneous release is reduced. 
is not abolished, is reduced, by significantly reduced. We made a lot of experiments. These are the number of animals, but we have uh, <coughs> thousands of minis analyzed. So it is reduced in, uh, in, 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 uh, in, the, uh, in mutants in which we change the, the, the polarity of the of residues with respect to the Y type. <coughs> the, the, the frequency of these events, someone can tell, but what happens at the level of the amplitude of the event? The amplitude, uh, this is the distribution of all amplitudes. You see that the, uh, the, the peak corresponded to the amplitude of the single, uh, the smaller uh, mini detected, and you see that uh, basically they are uh, uh, all around the same level. So the amount of neurotransmitter is not changed. So we have an effect on the fusion, not on the amount of the neurotransmitter. Uh, this is uh, uh, the same analysis made with the other uh, mutant, the one in which we change the charged residue with the uncharged residue. We saw also in this uh, uh, mutant uh, reduction of the minis. And uh, uh, OK, if, if uh, 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 this is the distribution of the, of the intervals between one, uh, one uh, mini and the, 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 the subsequent one which is called the inter-event interval. And this distribution should be uh, a Poisson distribution because it is a random. And we uh, checked if there were uh, alteration. There were no alteration. <coughs> From the point of view of the Vogt uh, potentials, postsynaptic potential, we also saw <coughs> a reduction of the amplitude. So also the Vogt potential is reduced. So the amount of vesicle fused following uh, the stimulus of the nerve is, uh, the amount of vesicle is reduced. So the amplitude of the postsynaptic potential, potential is reduced. Um, this is more complicated to explain. <laughs> I need to go here. This phase is the rise phase, is uh, the time in which you have uh, the um, exit of neurotransmitter through the pore in the synaptic space. We wanted to see if the formation of the pore is altered. And we didn't find any alteration. So in other words, the alteration is due to something which acting before the fusion, which is the true formation of the rosette. If you do not have the formation of the rosette, you do not have the pore, and you, you cannot have any alteration in the formation of the pore. Is, is, is it clear or not? OK, so you have the fusion or not. You do not have any kind of effect on the formation of the pore. This is what we are uh, we checked using this kind of analysis. Another kind of analysis is this one, the calcium dependency of the uh, evoked uh, uh, potential. Uh, there is a calcium dependency, you see, here and here. But obviously, the curve is the same, but the, the levels are lower because the amplitude of the postsynaptic potential is reduced. So the sensitivity is maintained. This signifies that. For instance, synaptotagmin is acting well. Uh, this is the same reduction uh, in uh, uh, the amplitude of postsynaptic potential with uh, the uh, not charged uh, mutant. And also the same uh, dependence, uh, sensitivity dependence, and so on from calcium. Okay. From the morphological point of view, we didn't find any alteration. Uh, this is the distribution in the, uh, in the synaptic Bouton's uh, diameter. 
uh, for the ones uh, uh, for the ones who are not uh, familiar with Drosophila, we have two types of Bouton, small and uh, big, and uh, this, uh, the distribution show that there are, uh, in fact, two, 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 two populations. So in other, uh, the data I show you support, and support, doesn't demonstrate, support, <laughs> a model for the core of the neural exocytosis nanomachine consisting of, uh, uh, this is the new, uh, the new calculation, eight uh, snare complexes interacting via the C-terminal of SNAP25 and the syntaxing segment centered around uh, the residue 253 in Drosophila, obviously. So uh, we uh, also, uh, having uh, uh, in our hands these uh, mutants, we could also study their behavior. So we have uh, uh, mutants in which we uh, saw that there are uh, changes in the syn synaptic activity, just, not just for fun, but we have this, uh, this mutant. What happens uh, at the level of uh, behavior? So we can do it in Drosophila. <coughs> there are also uh, uh, ideas that a specific alteration, a specific alterations in uh, uh, SNAP25 expression, other snare protein, uh, proteins expression, neurexin, uh, uh, expression can uh, be at the, the basis of some kind of psychosis. The first one who studied behavior in Drosophila was this person, is uh, Seymour Benzer, was a physicist. Uh, he, dis he lost the, I think he lost the Nobel Prize three times because he studied the, the transistor, was one of the group who studied the transistor. Then he studied the um, recombinant uh, uh, processes uh, in, uh, uh, in uh, V-viruses. And then he was the first one to show that there is, uh, uh, the behavior can be connected with the genes, studying the, uh, the clock genes in Drosophila. So one analysis is, uh, we are able to do is the sleep analysis. So, well, uh, maybe you have sleep problems and uh, uh, it could be interesting for you to know that uh, maybe also an insect has a sleep prob uh, problems like you. And so maybe you are happy about this. This is a way to study sleep in Drosophila. Uh, there is a monitor, this is, call, uh, this is called a monitor. You see that uh, uh, there are many tubes inserted uh, inside the monitor. Inside each tube, uh, there is, uh, this is the tube, there is one uh, uh, adult, and the adult is going uh, uh, left and right, left and right during the day, okay? And each time, uh, ev uh, every time he crossed the, the center of the tube, there is an infrared uh, beam which is interrupted and this uh, gives a signal to the computer. When you are sleeping, you are resting, so you don't cross the line. And uh, uh, there are uh, uh, a lot of studies uh, made uh, using a more sophisticated uh, system than this one uh, by Tononi uh, uh, and Cirelli. And they demonstrated that uh, a rest uh, of more than five minutes can be called um, sleep in Drosophila. And uh, these are completely preliminary data. Uh, the black line uh, is the sleep in a, a wild type drosoph uh, in a wild type in, in a certain number of wild type uh, adults. This is uh, light day, twelve hours day, day, and this is night. Okay, so as you can see, like us drosophilas, sleep during the night. Okay and uh, awake close to the morning. This is uh, uh, clock genes. And like everyone, also the ones who doesn't believe that this is possible and uh, force you to work in the lab, every drosophila is also sleeping in the midday, the classical nap, okay? Uh, 
this one is the line of our mutant. You see that it sleeps more during the day and less during the night. If we analyze the data from the point of view, quantitative point of view, we see that total sleep is the same. So they sleep the same amount <laughs> of time, but uh, more during day than uh, during night, especially during day, during day they sleep more. And moreover, you can analyze the uh, number, uh, the number of sleep boots is uh, less during day, so they fall asleep for a longer time, then they awake, they do something, then they fall asleep again, and so on. And uh, is the sleep uh, is uh, uh, frequently interrupted in the, uh, in, the, in, in the night. So there is uh, an arrhythmia in the sleep. I am not saying that these are schizophrenic drosophilas, but <laughs> in the schizophrenic patients, we have some kind of drosophila traits. So we are, I am saying that the schizophrenic patients behave like drosophila or not. Okay, no way. <laughs> Another test was the Bang test. Can I talk just only? Uh, the Bang test is a test in which uh, uh, placing adults inside uh, 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 a cylinder and you vortex them, uh, you can induce an uh, epileptic seizure. Uh, this is the epileptic seizure. This is the vortexing. Then you have uh, an uh, epileptic seizure. Then you have the paralysis following the epileptic seizure. And then you have uh, sometimes a recovery seizure or a slow recovery from the paralysis. This, this uh, series of events is exactly like in humans, exactly. When you see an epileptic seizure in humans, you have the epilepsy, paralysis, and slow recovery. Exactly. So Mark Tanayu in, in, uh, in, uh, in Berkeley is studying uh, epilepsy in drosophila uh, using this, uh, this, uh, uh, this model. Uh, you can see uh, uh, this is the number of uh, uh, drosophila, uh, of uh, drosophilas um, um, in the bottom and at various levels of the cylinder after the, uh, the bang. Uh, more you have uh, in higher levels, easier is the recovery, less, for instance, epileptic uh, behavior you have. So blue is uh, the wild type, red is the um, uncharged residue, and uh, green is the uh, swap of the, uh, of the charged residue, is the, <coughs> uh, uh, the swap of the, of the charged residue. You can see that the green one is the stronger phenotype, which can be, obviously we cannot uh, uh, do the same, uh, uh, superimpose everything, but when you have uh, uh, two, uh, uh, two charges of the same scene, you have also a, a repulsion, while when you have uh, uh, just only an uncharged uh, residue, you have no uh, repulsion. Is an idea, okay, it's not. Uh, this is uh, for, uh, for, uh, for uh, Fabien. <coughs> uh, uh, th th this is the fly visual system, the retina, and the, 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 the layer be, be, be below the retina. Uh, I suggest you to read this uh, if, you, if you want. Uh, uh, take this paper. It's very, this one is very interesting if you want to understand about the... And uh, th th this is, is the, the wiring. <laughs> Uh, so everything is known, and uh, as you can see, all these uh, neurons uh, are processing both vision, vision and uh, motion. You hit. Okay. Uh, you can study uh, the uh, response of the system to a moving uh, field. When you place the, the fly inside the cylinder with the black and white stripes, vertical stripes, and then you rotate the, stri the stripes. 
you can measure the ability of the fly. The fly is flying and is trying to, to fly turning right if the cylinder is turning right and turning left. When it, when it, and you can measure this, uh, uh, this ability to turn right and left. Uh, this is a kind of uh, uh, behavior we can study uh, in Drosophilus. We didn't do it yet, but we, we, would to do, we wanted to do it because it is a very precise uh, um, uh, type of uh, uh, information processing I I of the, our system. Another uh, type of uh, uh, analysis is the electroretinogram, how this uh, uh, signal goes through the uh, visual system, which is the electroretinogram. Uh, placing a recording electrode in the retina and uh, uh, another uh, indifferent electrode in the brain, you can see uh, this kind of response better here uh, when you stimulate the, 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 with the uh, lead, the, the, the drosophila. We have this uh, response. This one and this one is the on-off response at the level of the um, uh, neurons uh, located in the lower uh, uh, layers below the, 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 the retina, and this uh, response is due to the photoreceptors in the retina. It's a kind of uh, uh, analysis we can do. Another analysis is this one, by, uh, was made by Van Winderen. We can study attention in, Dros <laughs> in Drosophila. <laughs> I'm pushing you to work with the drosophila, as you see. Uh, uh, how, uh, th this is uh, really difficult. In other words, you have the same uh, system like uh, the, the one we observed in the optomotor response, but instead of to have uh, uh, black and white stripes, we have uh, uh, specific uh, scenes, uh, like a cross or other ones. And uh, if you record directly from the brain, this is a kind of electroencephalogram in uh, drosophilus, uh, you can see, uh, using noise analysis, you can see that there is a frequency of appearance uh, of a certain type of responses, uh, which is close to the appearance of a specific stimuli. Uh, Bruno is a, is a very nice guy. <coughs> Okay, so this is just to show you what is possible to do uh, beside the normal analysis uh, of drosophila mating and so on. We can do very strong things. This uh, is, uh, uh, was uh, the neurofly, uh, neurofly uh, picture, uh, but these are the, uh, uh, the person who are working uh, together. Me, uh, obviously, uh, Professor Montecucco, uh, Michele Scorzetto is working with me and is making uh, uh, the uh, electrophysiological experiment. Ornella Rossetto and, and Michele Rigoni are working uh, on the um, uh, biochemical uh, and uh, molecular biology analysis of the mutants. Sergio Pantano is uh, the modelist. Uh, Mauro Zordan is the genetist, neurogenetist. And uh, Zani, uh, Damiano Zanini, Clara Benna, and Cristina Dare work uh, with uh, Mauro to prepare the mutants. Okay. And this is another kind of uh, behavioral test, if you want. <laughs> Thank you.